An increasingly common perspective in academic papers, presentations, and conversations is that interaction with intelligent systems is deeper, more profound than interaction with simpler systems. AI systems are described as teammates. We speak of our partnerships with AI and of human AI collaboration. This conferral of personhood and agency to computer programs can be thought of as an agentistic turn in HCI research. The agentistic turn is a widespread phenomenon that goes beyond any individual author or group. For example, papers matching the query human AI collaboration have been steadily increasing. As of December 2022, Google Scholar had indexed over 2,250 papers containing the exact phrase human AI collaboration. But in a human AI collaboration, whose labor are we talking about? With a few exceptions, almost every AI system relies on labeled training data. To respond to the growing need for labeled training data, a billion dollar and rapidly growing global industry has emerged. Where do data labeling workers come from? This type of work skews heavily towards the poor countries of the global south. India is known as AI's back office, where entrepreneurs set up shop in tiny villages drawing on the inexpensive labor pools. Vulnerable workers around the world, from Kenya to the Philippines, power the artificial intelligence industries of the West for less than $30 a week. The daily work of data annotation is grueling. For example, TikTok moderators are asked to review as many as 1,000 videos a day, causing them to watch videos at 300% the normal speed. The reliance on workers from the Global South is often presented positively as an opportunity for social inclusion and mobility, and for workers to get experience and a foothold in the technology sector. The promise of upward mobility and gaining technical skills is often false, as there is little opportunity for growth within the industry. Artificial intelligence is causing the distancing of knowledge work in which the labor of experts can be replicated and sold without their direct involvement. The paper explains how this can be compared to the stories of physical commodities like sugar and coffee, echoing the historical exploitation of working individuals. AI-driven tools are being used to automate various job skills with an emphasis on efficiency and productivity. However, the development of these tools can be associated with exploitative practices. Just as we are now aware of these issues with regards to physical commodities, we should now focus on the distancing of knowledge labor through AI, challenging the phrase human AI collaboration. There are ways of building AI systems without relying on large amounts of manually annotated data. First, we can generate synthetic datasets, as has been done very effectively with computer graphics. Second, in scenarios such as playing digital games, an AI system can learn how to play simply by trying various actions within the game and receiving feedback about whether it is succeeding. Third, if human data is needed, we can get it from the vast repositories of freely accessible data on the internet. These approaches are all promising, yet each has limitations which mean they cannot be applied in every situation. Synthetic data can only be generated in scenarios where we have clear underlying mathematical models of the domain. This is possible in computer graphics, where principles of vision and optics have been studied for centuries, and we have decades of experience in generating computer imagery. Automatic feedback can only be generated in highly constrained settings, such as games, where we have a straightforward signal of whether the system is doing well or not. Thus, there will always be situations where human labeled data constitutes the best description of the desired behavior of the system. This article advocates for the metaphors, AI is a tool or AI is an instrument. Viewed in this way, the phrase human AI collaboration becomes inconsistent with how we typically understand the term collaboration. We wouldn't say carpenter-hammer collaboration, for example, or surgeon-scalpel collaboration, or pianist-piano collaboration. Is AI, as a tool,
comparable to hammers, scalpels, or pianos. Language models can write stories and poetry. Image generation models can generate beautiful images. What hammer could do that? In an effort to acknowledge the qualitative differences between the capabilities of AI and prior generations of tools, some coin new terms such as super tool. Others conceptualize AI as cognitive extenders, which alter and extend our cognition and ways of information processing, placing it in the same category as inventions such as web search, maps, and writing. It is worth revisiting the source of the human AI collaboration metaphor. If there are so many problems with it, why does the community use it in the first place? The metaphor of AI as collaborator comes from a genuine desire to support and empower users of these systems. It has been developed as a response to the narrative of apocalyptic automation, where the human has been cut out of the loop, replaced and dehumanized. Instead of a future where AI takes our jobs and takes control from us, the human AI collaboration metaphor imagines a future where we work together with AI systems, each building on the unique strengths of the other. This is a sentiment that has the best of intentions, but we can do better. We can empower users without disenfranchising the nameless laborers of AI in the process. I am suggesting that we must stop using phrases such as human AI collaboration or human AI partnership. Terminology matters. Shifting terminology to make our values explicit has much precedent in the field of human-computer interaction. Indeed, the field itself was consciously renamed from computer-human interaction to human-computer interaction to put the human first. It turns out there are humans on both sides of the computer. We must put them all first. <laughs>